an important uh, topic of the production uh, design models are the uh, reviewing of the demand and today we're going to talk a little bit about demand forecasting models. First of all, uh, to analyze the demand, we have to plan the analysis. Then we have to have some market information or, or some information qualitative and quantitative from the market. And then we can uh, make our effort to forecast uh, the demand. The first thing we need to analyze is the uh, uh, time frame determination. For example, uh, we can be uh, analyzing the demand in a short term. This would uh, mean that uh, is an analysis of less than three months. And we are talking about uh, work scheduling or worker assignment. If uh, our analysis is to be a medium term analysis, this will uh, be for uh, three months from uh, from three months to three years, and the applicability of this analysis will be sales and production planning and budgets. And if we are talking of a long term uh, time frame, uh, we are talking uh, for of an analysis for more than three years, and the applicability of this analysis will be the development of new products or the planning of facilities. These are just uh, uh, some examples. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, it's uh, only this applicability, uh, the, the, the one that uh, we should consider for this uh, time frame. And uh, we need to learn how to choose the method. And we can have a qualitative focus or a, a quantitative focus. Uh, for example, uh, the applicability of a qualitative uh, focus is uh, used when the situation is imprecise uh, and there are few data. The quantitative uh, focus is uh, used when the situation is stable and there are historical data. There are some considerations that we need to, to uh, take uh, into account. Uh, it's uh, the qualitative uh, way. It, it involves intuition and experience. Uh, the quantitative uh, way will uh, involve mathematical techniques. And every time we talk about mathematical techniques, we are uh, remembering that uh, math is an exact science, uh, or it's intended to be that kind of way. What kind of, te of techniques can we use in, in a qualitative focus? It's an executive jury, for example, uh, a composite of sales department, uh, the Delphi method, or uh, a consumer market survey. And for the quantitative uh, focus, uh, it, there, are, there are time series models or causal models, the, one th the, the, the ones that we can analyze using uh, uh, dynamic models or dynamic programming. For example, uh, in the qualitative method of forecasting, we, we say that uh, this could be a, an executive jury. This means that the opinion of a small group of high-level managers uh, who meet demand are gathered together. Uh, the group uses its managerial experience, in some cases, at, uh, to the result uh, of a statistical models. Uh, this means that uh, we, we gather uh, um, uh, people from the sales department, uh, from the production department or the operation department, from uh, accounting, and we, uh, in, as a group, we analyze the demand as a phenomenon. Uh, there uh, also can be a composite of the sales department uh, where each seller, for example, by territorial coverage, uh, is asked to project their sales. As the seller is the closest to the market, has the ability to know the demand of the customers. The projections are the, com the combined uh, at the municipal, provincial, or regional levels, depending on the area that every seller, uh, every seller covers. There is also the Delphi method, uh, uh, where the, it's a panel of experts and a panel of experts uh, identify in which uh, 
uh, these uh, experts can be uh, managers, common employers, or industry experts. Each of them is individually asked to estimate the demand, and an iterative process is performed until the expert reach a consensus. Uh, uh, for uh, the Delphi method to work, we need to have uh, maybe some uh, use of uh, quantitative analysis of uh, uh, business models. Uh, for example, we can we can uh, build a consensus uh, using um, brainstorming ideas, then some uh, relationship diagrams, and and then uh, uh, using uh, the interactive management abilities that we can have to uh, get a consensus over what the demand will be. And uh, at least uh, we can uh, use uh, the consumer market survey where we ask customers about their shopping plans and their planned shopping behavior. It takes a larger number of uh, respondents to generalize certain results. Uh, so every time we, we apply a, a, a survey, uh, we have to be sure of what we are asking the market for and uh, the, the questions in their survey uh, has to be very close to analyze so we have the information that we really need. When we talk about quantitative methods, uh, the first of them will be the simplistic approach and it assumes that uh, the demand uh, in the next period is equal to the demand in the most recent period. Uh, the pattern of the demand may not always be completely stable. For example, if July sales were uh, 50, then August sales will also be 50. This is a very simplistic approach, but uh, uh, you would be very surprised of how many uh, companies use uh, this kind of approach. When we are talking about uh, other quantitative methods, uh, we are talking about moving average, exponential smoothing, or the use of uh, time series, uh, for example, the Winters model. Let's uh, begin with analyzing uh, and, and, uh, this situation. We are going to uh, forecast the demand for disposable diapers in Tegucigalpa. And let's suppose that you intend to, to sell these disposable diapers in the city. Uh, your marker would be the parents who reside in, in Tegucigalpa, who belong to the middle class uh, and have uh, babies between the ages of uh, zero and four years. That are, uh, is the time that uh, where um, the babies need the diapers. We are choosing a qualitative uh, method of analysis, but not uh, uh, for being uh, qualitative, it's, it's not going to be a little bit quantitative. Uh, before calculating your annual demand in units, you must obtain the following data. The population of Tegucigalpa, the number of families, the percentage, the percentage of the population belonging to the middle class and the upper class, uh, how many babies there are between zero and four years old, uh, by means of the survey, find out uh, what percentage of middle class and upper class people are willing to buy diapers. And from this percentage mentioned above, you have to know how many units you are willing to buy annually. So, investigating this information, uh, we, we have that uh, Tegucigalpa has uh, uh, 850,045 445 uh, people. Uh, the number of uh, families is uh, uh, calculated dividing this uh, population between four. So we have uh, 212,611 families, so since most of the families uh, are made up of uh, four members. The percentage of the population belonging to the middle class and the upper class is 17% for the middle class and 3% for the upper class. Babies between 0 and 4 years old are uh, 
105,122 uh, babies or 12.36% uh, of the population of Tegucigalpa. By means of the survey, uh, uh, we found uh, uh, the middle class and upper class people willing to buy diapers and uh, we will uh, find out how many diapers we are uh, selling. Okay, so the, considering that the total number of family in Tegucigalpa is going to be factor A, the percentage of baby between zero and four years are going to be factor C, uh, the percentage of the population by social class is going to be factor C, uh, the percentage of consumption of diapers per class is going to be factor D, uh, and E is the units of annual consumption. So, uh, the, uh, the, the annual demand in units is going to be calculated by multiplying uh, A times B times C times D times E. So when we have the, the, the information of the last slide, we can calculate that we are going to sell uh, 6 million uh, 684,044 diapers. It's important to remember that uh, this figure is not the demand. This uh, figure is not the demand for the brand of, the, of your product, but the total number of all brands of a product. So, uh, in order for us to calculate the demand of our brand, uh, uh, we need to consider uh, what's the percentage of the market, uh, the market share, the, the, the market share that we have. Okay, this is just a, a, a simple example of how to apply a qualitative method. Uh, let's uh, continue by analyzing a uh, moving average and exponential smoothing. Uh, let's consider that we have we are a mass consumer uh, company keeps track of the monthly demand for one of its flagship products for, for a period of one year. This information is presented in the column labeled demand in the image, not below, in the, in the next uh, slide. You are required to use the moving average and simple exponential smoothing method considering three values of alpha, uh, alpha softening parameter. And these are uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0 0.9. And we are going to obtain the forecast uh, period uh, from the month of January of the following year. And uh, we are going to evaluate the adjustment of the method for each of the proposed alpha values. If we are talking about moving average, we are uh, calculating uh, an average of uh, all the information that we have uh, in the upper part of the, of the chart we can observe uh, that uh, this is the information that we have from January to December. Let's say that it's uh, January to December of 2016. And we have the information of the demand of every month. This is the real information. The part of the chart in gray is the part of the moving average analysis. So uh, if we see the, anal uh, the analysis for January of 2017, the 13th month of the analysis, these uh, 2,044 uh, uh, units of demand, it's calculating by uh, calculating the average of uh, the uh, 12 months before January of the analysis, January of 2017. So 2,044 is the average of all these quantities right here. If we want to calculate uh, February, we are going to uh, consider the 12 uh, uh, quantities before February of 2017. And this will mean from January 2017 to February 2016. This is the, the 12 data that we are going to analysis for calculating 
uh, February. So each time we do the next analysis, we are going to consider the 12 uh, data before the analysis that we are calculating. So if we want to uh, calculate uh, March, we are going to consider two forecasted data, already forecasted, and 10 data that is real. So uh, the disadvantage of the moving average uh, method is that uh, there is going to be a, a time, an analysis, where we are just using average to uh, calculate other averages. So uh, this would be uh, a very high risk uh, for this analysis. Uh, so the moving average is a, a good method because we can always uh, remember uh, the, the, the type of analysis that we are performing, but uh, we need to consider that uh, we are uh, using uh, the average to calculate other averages. For uh, exponential smoothing, there is a, a formula that we need to follow where we have to consider the uh, forecast of the uh, later uh, period and we are going to consider also the real data of the last period and uh, we are going to uh, um, consider also the uh, forecast for uh, the last period. Uh, this calculation over here, it's, a, it's an error between the real data and the forecast, and we are going to multiply it times uh, the alpha of the analysis. That, uh, that that we can uh, that it can be uh, analyzed uh, by uh, using the 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0 0.9 uh, values for uh, this alpha. And as alpha is greater, uh, the error is going to be. Uh, consider it uh, more in the forecast uh, calculation. When you when we perform this analysis, this is uh, the information that we obtain for every alpha, and uh, when we want to see which of uh, this alpha analysis is better. Uh, we need to calculate uh, an, a standard deviation between uh, the method and uh, the real data. For example, we have here from uh, January to uh, December of one year. This is the real data, and we can calculate the, the uh, standard deviation between one set of data and the other. The standard deviation, of course, of uh, the difference between the real data, the, uh, for example, here it's uh, 1,350, and uh, for every method we obtain 2,000. Here is uh, uh, 1,950, and with an alpha of uh, 0.1, we got uh, 1,935. With an alpha of 0.5, we obtained uh, 1,675, and with an alpha of 0.9, we obtained 1,415. So uh, the real data minus the one of the analysis, it's the, the difference, and the one that has the least uh, variation between this difference is going to be the better way of uh, calculating uh, this forecast. And we can uh, use the time series uh, forecasting method and for this we are going to use a mini tab. Uh, we open mini tab and we uh, use the, the, the real data for of the demand and we just uh, go to the statistics uh, window 
and we ask uh, Minitab to perform the winter's method plus uh, of demand, and uh, this is the response that uh, Minitab uh, gave us. Okay, so this is it for for the explanation of, of these uh, methods, uh, and uh, we'll uh, stop the uh, analysis here.